Hello everyone, this is Rohan live on the Healthy Human Podcast. Today we are doing the first ever of a new series I like to call Specialty Spotlight, where we highlight different professions within healthcare. On the first ever Specialty Spotlight, we are going to be talking about dentistry. Today with me, I have Dr. Harpreet Saini, a renowned dentist in the Bay Area. Dr. Saini, I'm very honored to have you on the Healthy Human Podcast, and let's just jump straight into the questions. So tell me a bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you went to high school, where you went to college, stuff like that. Um, hi and hi to all your viewers uh, and listeners. I am <laughs> um, Harpreet Saini. I am a general dentist uh, here in Pleasanton. Um, I've been in practice for now close to 20 years. Um, graduate of USC and uh, year 2001. Um, before that, I, I was a dentist in India. Uh, I finished my uh, Bachelor's of Dental Surgery, that's called BDS, that's a dental degree in India. Uh, before I moved to North America, that was in 99. Um, so I'm here since then in the Bay Area uh, and I practice here. I have two young boys, uh, teenager boys, uh, high schoolers, and a mom of two. So I'm a busy, <laughs> busy professional, you could say. That's great. Um, what was your favorite subject in high school and college and why that subject? Mm, my favorite subject was, I would say, I, I was inclined towards, you know, biology and learning all about biosciences. Um, that just interested me uh, right from the beginning, you can say, and I was not uh, keen on doing maths and subjects like that. So I, it was just, just my inclination or bent of mind was towards modern biosciences that I enjoyed. So that kind of ties into our next question here. So what made you choose the dental profession among other careers in health, the healthcare field? Um, dental, you know, I was keen on, you know, learning more about the medical sciences. And um, I had, uh, growing up, I have few doctors in the family and I have a uh, few cousins, those who were dentists and they were practicing. Um, so, you know, during holidays, I would spend some time uh, going to their clinics, uh, shadowing them and seeing what they're doing. And that dentistry work really uh, kind of uh, was relatable because the things that she was doing was all hands-on, um, uh, doing things like fillings on patients uh, that change, you know, right away um, uh, patients' looks. Uh, she would do some dentures, things like that, and I was helping her out. And that was really gratifying when she would do things and she would explain. So that influenced me. Uh, that was my first impression of dentistry. And uh, after that, I thought, okay, this is something which I can do. Um, and that's how I got in, uh, just pushed myself into it. And luckily I got into the school and started doing and being in the field. So, um... Could you describe the process of becoming a dentist? So basically what tests you had to take, was there an interview process and how did you feel during that process? Um, yes, uh, the process I went through was taking national board exams. Um, that was part one. And then after you clear that, you take part two. Um, that contest, this is, uh, this, these two tests you take, this, these are tougher tests. Once you clear that, uh, you apply to various schools and they will invite you for the interview. They want to meet with you. You sit down with them have, for a couple of rounds of interviews, go through that. And then they, uh, some schools, uh, they offer dexterity tests. Uh, so they want to test how your hand skills are. So they offer you uh, various types of, uh, you know, um, tests that test your um, skill level, um, your hand dexterities, uh, how well you can do all that. Um, and based on that, they they will, you know, you start the schooling process here. Yeah. So it's a two-year program or three-year program, depending on schools that you're applying to. Um, that's uh, that's how you go through uh, those two years. Uh, they have uh, rigorous training in those two years uh, or three years, depending on which school you choose to. Um, but that's the route. So national board exams uh, followed by interviews and uh, dexterity tests is the route to go. That's great. Um, what is one common misconception you or people had in general about your job? Um, I would say misconception would be, you know, this, uh, this is a medical field. We work via the doctors of the mouth. Uh, it's all about any anything related to mouth and head and neck actually 
so it could be diseases related to the mouth or in the neck or on, on, even on the outer surface of the skin uh, of the mouth so that's what we are we study we read about that and we are qualified to diagnose and treat uh, so misconception is people just think okay dentists are only um, you know uh, dealing with the teeth and that's all they know but this is um, you know teeth are definitely a mouth is a gateway of the body so it is connected it is one system um, anything that's happening here could be a representation of what is happening in your body so uh, if we can treat this well uh, your body uh, and it has to be in accordance to your body so things are you know uh, definitely cannot be uh, separated Although this, this field is quite, uh, you know, this is segregated separately as for mouth is different. But people, uh, as we are learning more about it, that this is one system and mouth is an integral part of the body. Could you describe uh, your day-to-day -day routine and what a day of yours would look like on average? Yeah, our day-to-day -day is, you know, I come to the office, I meet with the staff in the morning. We do have a little morning hurdle um, for what, you know the day our day will look like uh, we prepare according to the procedures that we are going to do um, and uh, you know we have to prepare all the instruments all the rooms so the staff will help us and the things if anything we need anything special that day then we'll take care of that so and our day would look like you know we'll see about seven to ten people or ten patients in a day and um, we see about an hour uh, with each patient uh, so we go you know go by uh, go our day you know looks like you know doing fillings different procedures of the day could be fillings could be crowns dentures uh, all kind of things as a general dentist would do we see uh, come across doing everything see children also so we prepare accordingly how when small young kids will come yeah so yeah that's great mm -hmm. um kind of an interesting question here what is one scientific innovation that you think has majorly affected your work and benefited what you do here? Um, there are a lot of things, you know, the scientific um, changes that have come out on your technology. Uh, first is the digital x-rays that have come up. Uh, these x-rays are very fast and with very low radiation. That's one, one thing which without x-rays, obviously, we cannot diagnose what's happening inside the tooth or a little bit below the tooth in the bone any pathologies like that we cannot diagnose so um, you know with panoramic x-rays of cbct machines we can diagnose their cracks fractures any pathology even cancers tumors um, that are there we can diagnose all that so this is one of the things which we're doing uh, which we're using on everyday basis uh, that's one um, other is, uh, you know, digital impressions or digital scans are available these days, which are very, very useful. And that also gives us a clear picture of um, even patients can see it, how their teeth look and how the intraoral structures look. So that that gets them involved also. That's it. You know, you can give them a tour of their teeth uh, when they come in. So this is something which is very, very nice uh, these days that we are using. That's great. Yeah. Um, so now that the pandemic is kind of big right now, mm -hmm. um, how has the pandemic affected your job and the way things work? And what are some problems that this transition has caused you? Uh, pandemic, unfortunately, obviously, we all it has affected all walks of life. But in dentistry, um, mainly that we have seen is, you know, people uh, this people are a little hesitant in coming, and um, you know they are deferring their treatment. Uh, they don't want to do, they don't want to come in, they want to, uh, you know, wait. So that in that respect, we are seeing fewer and fewer people. So in terms of business, yes, that has impacted um, financially as well. Um, other is the supply chain has uh, been impacted. The things that we bring from outside, uh, the disposables, all kind of uh, things have gone up in price. Uh, that That is also another issue that pandemic has brought in. Um, and those, uh, those of course, are uh, something that you know we have to factor in when we do um, our day-to-day uh, -day dentistry. Uh, now on to another interesting question. Uh, can you describe your most challenging procedure and what the outcome was? Hmm, most challenging procedures. Uh, well, you know, after doing it for so long now, for about a good 20 years, things are not as challenging as I would do, I would feel how I started in the beginning. Um, but most challenging is when 
patients have very small mouth and they have they cannot open their mouth and we have to work on their back teeth that's the most challenging of all uh, and it is uh, you know that's the one uh, one thing about working in the mouth is it's a very small area and we have to work with our two hands and the tools along with it so it gets very very difficult if their mouth opening is very small uh, but we still kind of manage to do it um, we have tools like you know mouth props and also we use that and then achieve it and finally when we are done we we feel quite accomplished <laughs> yeah. yeah but that that's i think the most uh, challenging thing besides you know obviously the not the procedures like root canals and crowns those are our day-to-day -day things that we definitely are um you know pretty uh, comfortable doing now <laughs> yeah um have you ever had to help a patient who was uncomfortable with a dental procedure Oh yes, I mean that's something very common. That's not uh, uncommon to see that you know people are people ha come with some uh, you know apprehension. There they have some phobia about the dentists, and or sometimes they have phobia about the needles. Um, so they are not as comfortable when they come in. Um, that that happens very very commonly. Um, but our goal is to you know make everybody comfortable so that they can um, take the treatment. Um, and can get uh, and we can help them that's that's how we can uh, serve them better if they are comfortable yeah um, and this is kind of linking to a question I asked you before but mm -hmm. what is the most common dental problem you've seen patients come on, come in with and also what is the most rare you've seen them come in with um, I would say the most common now these days is of course the cavities were at one time um, most common where people will have a lot of cavities and they would have sensitivity in their teeth uh, these days uh, I think I've, I've come across as a lot of gum disease issues are coming up with the people they have they come with um, complain of bleeding gums bad breath bad taste in the mouth um, and of course leading to some sensitivity on their teeth um, so that that's sort of the most common um, uh, disease or occurrence that we see in patients and the second part was you asked me what is the least common yeah yeah the least common I would say which uh, you know I don't obviously luckily don't uh, encounter every day is the tumors in the mouth um, or oral cancers we do look for them but luckily they are not that's the one of the rare things that one would come across yeah yeah because as a dentist we look out for those as well we have the tools and um, ways of looking or tests for looking at those uh, lesions or in the mouth when if anything abnormal appears or a tissue doesn't look normal we want to look into that but luckily that's one of the rarest things um, that comes up yeah. that's yeah that's nice mm -hmm. um, what skills and traits are needed in order to become a successful dentist yeah this uh, skills that you need are of course your hand skills that's the dexterity is needed that's the first thing because it's all about your how well you can work with your hands uh, that's uh, if you are a good dentist your your hand skills is the most important thing uh, but i think besides that uh, what i personally feel is the attitude if you are a you know you are a good person you want to work you can work well with the other people and can um, you know make people comfortable uh, that's that skill is required not just the hand skills not just the soft skills but as a person uh, your attitude makes you what you are yeah it's very insightful <laughs> if you could go back in time and talk to your younger self what advice would you give to yourself or to anyone who plans on pursuing this sort of career um, I would say you know uh, going back is uh, yes as always you want to mend a lot of things uh, but you know I would say stress out less uh, be more you know comfortable in whatever you're doing uh, make it enjoyable uh, this is uh, obviously you want to reach at some place and this is always a destination but I feel that the journey is always more beautiful so enjoy every part of it that's really great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Saini, for taking part in this first ever specialty spotlight. Once again, this has been Rohan live on the Healthy Human Podcast. Be sure to tune into next episode where we'll continue to explore the wonderful world of health. Until next time, remember, happiness is the product of good health.